Good afternoon. I'm delighted to join you in paying tribute to Richard's contributions as one of the most influential epidemiologists of our time. Looking over all the amazing talks on today's program, I truly wish that I could be there in Oxford to help celebrate the broad arc of Richard's accomplishments. But let me assure you, I am there in spirit. And recognizing that the organizers have invited a lot of speakers, some of whom are legendary in their inability to keep the time, uh, yes, that includes me, I can also assure you that I will occupy no more than the assigned five-minute slot. After all, this is a video. Just this past March, my colleagues and I had the privilege of hosting Richard on this side of the Atlantic. He was at Duke University to attend an international summit on large-scale prospective cohorts organized by the Global Genomic Medicine Collaborative. At that time, I mentioned that Richard is sometimes called the Mozart of the clinical trial, a comparison that reflects both the extraordinary quantity and the exceptional quality of his work. As some of you may know, the young Mozart was fascinated not just with music, but with mathematics, scribbling numbers on the tables, walls, and even floors of his family home. Although Richard no doubt prefers a blackboard or a whiteboard or perhaps an occasional restaurant napkin for his calculations, he has brilliantly used his mathematical gifts to a much different effect, shaping the way in which clinical trials and population studies are conducted and analyzed. Without the vision of Richard and his distinguished mentor, Sir Richard Dahl, who knows when meta-analysis would have been applied to clinical research? Many of Richard's impressive achievements are well known to this group, but with your forbearance, I would like to offer a few observations on how his work has helped to make the case for an area of science near and dear to my heart, large-scale prospective cohort studies. As the first to describe the worldwide effects of smoking patterns, Richard demonstrated how gathering and analyzing biomedical evidence on a very large scale can have a direct impact on reducing premature mortality. By recognizing the value of extremely large data sets for answering simple questions about everything from the treatment of early stage breast cancer to the prevention of cardiovascular disease, he pioneered the use of big data long before it entered our nomenclature. And his contributions go well beyond that. Richard, your capacity for blazing new scientific trails is rivaled only by your ability to communicate scientific results in a simple, direct manner that the public can understand and act upon. That rare combination of talents has not only enlivened and enriched our scientific enterprise, it has saved untold numbers of lives. For that, humankind will be forever grateful. Now, I'm sure that by now, Richard is blushing and protesting and insisting that any recognition of his achievements must extend to his global circle of collaborators. Well, indeed, one of his most lasting legacies was to initiate a series of large-scale studies of tobacco, blood pressure, obesity, and mortality in China, India, Cuba, Egypt, and Mexico. In fact, several of those collaborators sent representatives to our recent international summit at Duke. The seed for many of these studies emerged through Richard's thoughtful conversations with like-minded epidemiologists who had established or wanted to establish a cohort study in their own countries. And as we've come to expect from Richard, the resulting studies were big and bold, with most being at least an order of magnitude larger than any previous endeavors in those nations. I like to call that the PETO effect. And among the many projects benefiting from that effect is the All of Us research program recently launched by my agency, the U.S. National Institutes of Health. We designed this program, which just last month began the process of enrolling one million or more Americans to implement the principles of massive scale and exceptional data quality that Richard has championed throughout his career. Richard, I understand this retirement ceremony likely will have little effect on your research activities. If that proves to be the case, uh, those of us involved in organizing large-scale cohort studies stand ready and eager to receive more of your insights on how to build the most compelling case possible for our research. So, on behalf of myself and the entire U.S. scientific community, 
I want to thank you, Richard, for sharing your phenomenal creative energy with the world, your commitment to true and equitable collaboration, and your frank persistence in challenging accepted wisdom have transformed public health research. For that, we all owe you a debt of gratitude. In closing, I'd like to share a quotation that I think is in keeping with the spirit of this symposium, a pithy saying from one of Britain's most illustrious sons, Sir Winston Churchill. This pretty much sums up Richard's revolutionary approach to science. Quote, out of intense complexities, intense simplicities emerge, unquote. Or perhaps it's the reverse. I'll leave that to Richard to figure out. Have a wonderful symposium and congratulations, Richard.